I'm going to do this half angle formula problem, but I think it's easiest to see if you can look at this as a triangle. If we put a line, let's make it blue, if it's between zero degrees, so we know that the x axis is zero degrees, and we know that the positive y axis is 90 degrees, it means that our angle is somewhere in between here. So, if the cosine is 4 over 5, that means that it is taller in the x direction than the y. So let's say this is our angle, which makes this x. The angle is always the angle made by the x-axis and the terminal side of your angle. Now, if you can just drop straight from this point on the unit circle where your angle intersects the unit circle, if you can go straight down, you have created a right triangle. And if you remember, I don't know if you learned that uh, SOCATOA, because we have a cosine, that means we're using this, and that means that the cosine of x is the adjacent, which is this, over the hypotenuse. That's what the A stands for, is adjacent, sorry I don't write well with a mouse, over hypotenuse. So, because this thing sits on the unit circle, the hypotenuse is always 1, and so the adjacent here is going to be 4 fifths, and now you can just do the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and find out that this shorter top vertical height is 3 fifths. Now, um, if you need the sine of x, well, it's the opposite over 1, which is the hypotenuse, which is just 3 fifths. If you need the tangent, it's the opposite over adjacent. And the opposite is 3 fifths, while the adjacent is 4 fifths. And that's a complex fraction. But if you multiply the bottom by 5 and the top by 5, so you've basically multiplied by 5 over 5, which equals 1, the 5's go away and you find out that the tangent is 3 fourths. So that answers how do you do cosine and tangent, but it doesn't answer how do you find these half angles. And for these half angles, all you really need is the cosine of x for all of these. Okay, so we didn't really need to go through all that because what we could do is go plus or minus the square root of 1 minus, well, the cosine of x is 4 fifths over 2. Now we have to decide plus or minus. If you're here in the first quadrant, the sine, that's the vertical, that's the y, if you make this x and y, y is positive and y is sine. x is cosine. So um, we're going to use the positive here. Um, the cosine of your angle divided by 2, this is going to be plus or minus the square root, this time of 1 plus the cosine, and the cosine is 4 fifths, all over 2. And the tangent is plus or minus the square root of 1 minus 4 fifths divided by 1 plus 4 fifths.
And so it's just a matter of doing these complex fractions. Um, if you multiply this whole top by 5 and this whole bottom by 5, what you get is the square root. Um, this is 5 minus 4 is 1 over 10. Here, if you multiply this whole top, oh, we didn't decide plus or minus. Cosine is x, it's positive here, so we don't need the minus. And so, um, if you multiply top and bottom by 5, you're multiplying by 5 over 5 or 1. This becomes 5 plus 4 is 9 over, over 10. So, this is going to equal the positive square root of Five, those cancel, plus 4 is 9 over 10. And the square root of 9 is 3, so we should probably simplify that. This one, the square root of 1 is 1, we could simplify this. And then this one, if you multiply this top, oh, tangent, if you have positive over positive, the sign is positive. And so if you multiply top here by 5 and bottom here by 5, you get 5 minus 4 is 1, and you get 5 plus 4 is 9, and you're taking the square root, and that equals 1 third. Now, your teacher may want you to rationalize denominators, so in that case the sign becomes um, times radical 10 times radical 10, the square root of 10 over 10. The cosine becomes 3 times the square root of 10 over 10. And then the tangent doesn't have any radicals, so it's still 1 third. And those are your answers. Thank you.